Hi folks, Bob Collins for Diver Supply. Now some of you may or may not remember the equipment that I've got standing here. I've got one of the old backpacks, the J-Valve, a weight belt, and the old horse collar. Now thankfully we don't have to dive with this kind of equipment anymore. We can use some of the latest equipment by TUSA and their great BCDs. Stick with us, we're going to take a look at those. I hope you enjoyed that little intro and a look at some of the equipment from years past. But what we're going to be looking at in this video is we're going to be looking at a couple of BCDs by TUSA. TUSA is short for Tabata USA. These two BCDs are kind of unique and the Tina is actually new for 2019. Now I've had a couple of calls and met a couple of people and I wanted to start off the video about the Tina. I had a call a couple of weeks ago from a lady down in Orlando named Crystal and she said that she had seen some of our other videos on female BCDs and wanted a, a little bit of a review on the Tina. In addition to that, yesterday here in the store at a pool session, a lady came in and she had recently purchased a Tina and it's pretty amazing. Probably in the past week, just here in the store, I know we've sold a half dozen of these. It's an extremely, uh, or has become an, an extremely popular BCD. And let's take a look and see why that's so. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up here at the shoulders and work my way down. I, I tend to do that. So we've got a nice badge up here. We come down. On both sides, there's pre-bent stainless steel D-rings here. Kind of nice. Uh, it's, these are used and very useful for myself and many of the people I work with. We take our small compact flashlight and dive light and hook it right here. That way, all you have to do is just turn it. If you see a little ledge, you want to look at a turtle or want to look in a hole, maybe a squirrel fish or something like that. So both of these, and they're pre-bent. Now, as we come down, we've got our standard quick release shoulder adjusters. And one of the things I want to note is right here on the right shoulder, the Tina has a right shoulder dump. Many people are trained and they don't even pay attention to these right shoulder dumps. And you have to remember that a right shoulder dump is pretty much always in the right position. So if your feet down, that dump is right there on your shoulder. And also, if you're in the neutral buoyancy position, then that shoulder dump is basically right in the right position. So if you're, if you're not ac accustomed to using your right shoulder dump, uh, practice with it. And of course, if you buy a Tina, then you've got that. A lot of times people become addicted to just using the inflator deflator valve and of course when you're in the neutral buoyancy position that doesn't necessarily work so good because you're having to put a big bend in it. But as we come down we've got those quick releases, we've got our D-rings so we can snug up our shoulder straps. And right inside here, and I'm going to get a shot of this, they call this an independent harness. And what this does, this wraps the student or the customer and gives you a little standoff between the harness and the actual bladder where it comes around. In addition, the backpack, it's got a nicely padded backpack in here, handle to help carry and move around the, uh, the unit, which is kind of nice. Chest strap. Now, one thing about the chest strap that's again really nice on both of these BCDs is that this chest strap is adjustable. It can be moved up or down according to the fit on the, on the lady. And the Sovereign also has the same thing, which really makes it pretty nice. Down here on the side, as we come down, there's an octo pocket here. 
And a lot of times we see people, their octos are dangling and stuff. So an octo pocket is really handy. You just kind of put a, a U in the hose and slide it down in there. And if you look right here, there's also a resin connector. This connector is kind of interesting because you could hook your octo here. Now, this can also be disconnected and moved up here. There's a little, a little loop right here that you can move that connector from here to here, this resin D-ring. There's also a, a mount here for a cutting device, if you like. And one of the things that's really nice about the, the Tina is the way that these zipper pockets work. If you take a look at this, you're going to notice that there's a double zipper and the zipper is actually curved so that when you pull it up and open, you have full access here instead of always having to reach in the top. You can actually reach in a little bit from the front. And in addition, I'm going to get a close up of this. Uh, if you look down in here, the bottom of the Tina, and I'll try to get again a close up, there's some mesh here on the bottom to help drain any water that happens to get in the pocket. Have to say, uh, that may be good or it may be bad. If you're constantly keeping um, something in there, you could cause a, a wear spot there in that mesh. So that's something you want to keep an eye on. But being able to zip these clothes like that really makes it nice. The Tina and the Sovereign use the new advanced weight loading system. And basically what it is, it's your locking uh, weight pocket, it has a little track that you slide in and you can actually feel it underwater when it clicks into place. Again, kind of nice. And uh, we have um, a cummerbund. Now, one of the nice things on the Tina when you look right here, there's a little zipper pocket that you could put maybe some um, mass defog or something like that in it if you wanted to keep some with you right there. That kind of makes it nice. And then as we come over on this side, one of the things you'll notice about the, the Tina is they give you a nice kind of unique braided white hose. And um, one of the things that the TUSA tends to do is they have moved their button from the side to the top so that when you're putting you're putting your hand on the inflator deflator it has a little bit more of a comfort position so that you can inflate and or deflate and uh, becomes you know pretty handy there's a little cover there that you can put on the uh, on the connector if the hose is not on there and of course, over here on this side, we've also got another octo pocket with the loop, another that movable resin D-ring on this side, and also a mount for a cutting device. Now, one of the other little things I'm going to point out right down here at the bottom is you're going to notice that there's not a D-ring here. And it's kind of nice because some of these manufacturers have started to think forward and understand maybe a D-ring hanging out here is not necessarily the best thing. It's so much easier for people to reach at the front and be able to hook something on here, maybe like a surface marker buoy or, you know, something like that. So they've put the kind of move that little D-ring up here. One thing you're going to notice about the Tina with this female cut is that it's got a little uh, upper curve to it to allow for a female hip, which is, which is pretty nice. Let's take a look at the back of it. So we're back here on the back and what we've got is here is a vent. A lot of times people um, are taught to hold on to the inflator deflator and pull on it and it will vent from this back left shoulder. Now you just have to understand that as age comes about on these units, if you're constantly pulling on that, 
it could possibly weaken this connection where this valve is into the bladder. That's why I'm a big proponent of people using that right shoulder dump. You can see where the actuator string comes off the knob in the front and comes back here to open it up. Okay, now besides these two uh, vents, we have the uh, valve strap, which is kind of nice. Some of the BCDs don't have that sort of thing, which it makes the, helps make the tank an integral part of the structure of the BCD. It helps stiffen it up a little bit. This is the ultimate stabilizing backpack here, and it's kind of nice so that when that tank fits on here and is secured in place with your tank strap, then it sits on these two rubber friction pads and doesn't rock in the back of this. Now, as we come down, you can see here, uh, we've got trim pockets, and these trim pockets, again, kind of neat because they have a little bit of a curve in the zipper that you can utilize to put that, uh, those weights in there. Now, it also has down here uh, a butt dump so that when you're head down, butt up, then you're able to reach back and pull that so that you can vent air from the, the lower portion. Uh, which makes it kind of nice. So that's a look at the back of the Tina. I have some people ask me, what do I mean by full featured? Well, what I mean by that is when we look at things like D-rings, adjustable chest strap, uh, octo pockets, nice different connectors for both your uh, console and your octo. Like we looked in the back, you saw those trim pockets. Some of the lesser priced units or even some of the upper priced units, you may not see those trim pockets and they're so effective, it's just amazing. That's a look at the Tina and we're gonna take a quick look at the Sovereign. So here's the Sovereign. Hot Sovereign, of course, is more of a, a male design BCDs. Can females wear it? Yes, absolutely. Many of the features are similar, like the adjustable chest strap, the positioning on the inflator uh, D-rings. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that the Sovereign does not have a pre-bent D-ring on the left. It's got a loop that you could put a um, carabiner or something on right there, but it doesn't actually have a D-ring on it. It does have the right shoulder dump, similar. And of course, you've got your um, cummerbund now, the Sovereign Cumberbund doesn't have that nifty little pocket that we saw on the, the Tina. It has the same weight system in the back. It has the same trim pockets, the same ultimate uh, tank stabilization uh, backpack back there. And one of the other things that they talk about on these BCDs, they talk about the fact that the cam on the tank strap, it's really kind of nice because the cam, of course, has a curve to it, but when you pull that cam across, what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna take one, put it on a tank, and shoot a close-up. What I'm gonna do is hold it by the handle, and I'm gonna put the valve strap up here underneath my thumb, like what you see. If you don't do this, you're gonna end up with the valve strap stuck down here between the tank and the tank strap. But I'm gonna hold it like this, and then you can see I've got my cam loose, and you can see where I've got it unthreaded here. And so just to kind of give, give a couple of you maybe a little bit of a primer on how to install this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it, we're gonna begin lowering the tank strap down over the tank, and immediately I'm gonna go ahead and put my valve strap around, and this can help me secure my BCD and again see how nice and loose this is I want to snug that up put pressure on my cam run my tail through hold my tank and pop it across and seal it down just like that Okay, so that's a, a quick look at the Sovereign and the Tina. 
Hopefully I answered some of the questions that some of you have out there. I appreciate the comments from the people I've run into. And so we really appreciate you guys watching. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, I, number one, I want to thank all of our new subscribers. We're approaching 1,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please reach down there and hit that subscribe button and help us hit that 1,000 mark. As always here at Diver Supply, I'm Bob Collins, and we always say, dive safe. Thanks for watching.